Thank you. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men, I'm adding, and women, because it's not in there, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it's the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. The consent of the governed. Well, the GOP has anointed themselves a king, but we the people do not consent to, be, to being ruled over rather than governed. We do not consent. We do not consent. We do not consent. Since the revolution, the United States of America has only recognized one king, and he was tragically assassinated on April the 4th, 1968, at the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. Republican Senator Lamar Alexander described the House managers as having presented, quote, a mountain of overwhelming evidence in the impeachment trial of Donald J. Trump. And various senators have, been have described Trump's behavior as inappropriate, improper, shameful and wrong, and demonstrated very poor judgment, before going on to say that they would not vote to convict for a variety of shameful, vague, crass, opportunistic, indefensible, and or craven reasons. But their pathetic excuses for failing to hold to account this criminal and corrupt president who has continually and egregiously abused his power and obstructed the United States Congress place each and every one of these 52 Republican senators in rarefied company alongside historically traitorous Americans Benedict Arnold who defected to the British in 1780 during the American Revolutionary War and Aaron Burr who not only killed Alexander Hamilton in a duel over an insult, but was actually charged with treason for plotting with the Spanish. Since 2001, the betrayal of America has referred to more recent and more egregious betrayal by the Supreme Court in Bush versus Gore, when a five to four majority overturned the will of the people in awarding the 2000 election to George W. Bush. Fuck Bush! Today, February the 5th, 2020, in voting not guilty to the high crimes and misdemeanors of Donald J. Trump, despite a mountain of overwhelming evidence, and while refusing to allow either witnesses or evidence, these Republican senators have eclipsed Benedict Arnold. They've eclipsed Edmund Aaron Byrne. They've even eclipsed the Supreme Court. And they've been inducted into the Betrayal Hall of Fame. They've betrayed their oaths of office to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. They betrayed their impeachment oaths to do impartial justice. They betrayed their constituents and their country by placing their party and their dear leader above the national interests of our country, the United States of America. Every last one of them, every last House Republican who voted down articles of impeachment and their imposter of a president who would be king the forever impeached Donald J. Trump needs to be voted out of office in November in such overwhelming numbers that yeah. there's no argument, no doubt, yeah. no room for shenanigans and lawsuits, no room for dispute or denial. We will vow not to allow the election to be suspended, subverted, postponed or rigged we will vow not to allow the electoral process to be hijacked, manipulated, hacked or otherwise demeaned or devalued. We vow that whoever we support in the primary, I want you to hear me now, we vow that whoever we support in the primary, we will all unite behind our eventual nominee and we will bring to a close this shameful period of our history. This is our republic.
This is our republic and we will keep it. Now go out and fight for it and for the future we deserve.